Hey guys, Lou here, and today I'm going to teach you how to make good geometry dash thumbnails for completions in Paint.net. <laughs> so the things you're gonna need for this are Paint.net, of course, here, <laughs> and also this thing called Bolt Bait GPU Accelerator Plugin Pack. This gives you a ton of plugins and makes it's so much easier. I will link this link in the description of the video. What you're gonna do is click download so you get it. Now you're gonna go to your downloads folder in File Explorer and you see the bolt bait back 69. You're gonna try to double click on that and then don't worry I have WinRAR it might be different for you but just open this and then you should see bolt bait back install 69. You just gotta double click that and then it should bring you to this. Then this stuff isn't important, you just have to click this. I agree to the terms and conditions of the license agreements. And then you just click uh, install everything. I've already installed it so I will not install it again. But yeah, once you open paint.net again, you should go to effects and have all of these plugins. First of all, to make a GD thumbnail, you gotta put the level that you want to make a thumbnail out of in the back. So, so for example, if the level's limbo, then you can do this. And once you found a nice part, level, for example, this part, what you wanna do is have the thing playing, but you wanna click these three keys on your keyboard. The Windows key, the Shift key, and the S key. You gotta click them all at the same time. So when you're ready, bam. And then try to screenshot, like, the perfect aspect ratio. It'll, it'll provide the best for thumbnail. And then once you do that, go back to paint.net and click Control V. It probably says this, so you just gotta click uh, expand the thing. Now for my case, I do have these things on uh, the top because I accidentally screenshotted that as well, but people won't notice that, so don't worry. Now what you can do to spice up this and make it more appealing is you go to effects, you go to photo, for me it's photo of an F, but for you it's photo of PH, and then you go to vignette, either of the vignettes are good, and you can adjust uh, the value of this, you can even like adjust the color even, but I wouldn't recommend that, I usually think black is good, and you can adjust the radius and strength as well, but it's entirely up to you. Now what you could also do, is go to effects, go to blurs, for me it's this, but just for you it's blurs probably, if it's in English, and then you can choose Gaussian blur. Now usually I would recommend like 5 or something, I don't know. Now now for the actual fun part, getting some text. So what you want to do is go here to layers. Mine is longer because you can do this, but I like them like this. And you're going to click this plus button here. If done correctly, it'll add a layer too. Now what you want to do is you're going to you want to go to here and select the text font. Or just click T on your keyboard. Now you can go here and select a couple of fonts. And if they don't look good to you, then I have a nice website. You can go to this website called dafonts.com. This will also be linked in the description. And and here you can search for a bunch of fonts. There's also a bunch of font categories. So for example, here you can go to distorted and you can see a lot of distorted fonts. Like for example, this one. The one I'm gonna use is Dr. Glitch by Woodcutter. Cool, you don't have to copy it. You can choose your own font if you want to. Now what you wanna do is click the download button here. And it's basically the same process as the bolt bait pack. You open your file explorer once it's downloaded and you open it. Then you should see this. And then you go here and you click install and then you just open paint.net again and you see that it's in there. Also, you don't need to close paint.net, otherwise your thing won't be saved. So once you're back into paint.net, you can go to fonts and then you should find the fonts because it's in alphabetical order, it shouldn't take you that long. So you could just select it. Now what you wanna do is click anywhere on your canvas and then type the name of the level. So in my case, Limbo. Now what you want to do is go to the font size and just do what's good. For example, 192 for me is good because it covers the whole screen. But it might be a different size for you, so do whatever is good. Now what you want to do is go back here again and make another new layer. And normally this is only needed if you have a name of a level that's like more than two words. But if it isn't, then you could do, do the name of the level and then the creator of the level under it. If it's a mega collab, just like do the host, like mind cap in this example. And I would scale the font down to around this. Now here comes the fun part. Here comes the juicy fun part. What you want to do is go to tools and select this one or click s four times on your keyboard so what you want so what you want to do now is zoom in make sure you're on the first layer that you made with the text and now what you want to do is hold the control key on your keyboard it won't do anything but trust me just hold the hold it the entire time now what you want to do is click on one of the letters so for example l it selects the whole thing. Now the reason why holding control is so important is because you can select multiple things. So now you can also do the I. So keep holding control. If you don't hold control, the next thing will they will select will remove the next thing. Just hold control the entire time and just select everything. Don't select the other text because it's on another layer. So look, 
bam, that will happen. Now you can release control if you have selected everything. And now you want to go to effect up here, go to generate, and then choose gradient. And you can see this transforms the text into sort of like a thing. What you can do is change the color of this. So for example, here you can drag it to any color and here you can drag it to any color. What you should do is you should like make the color like a theme of the level. So what you should do is make like the color what the level's based off of. So for example, Limbo that I'm choosing right now is blue and purple. You can make the first color like a royal blue and the second color like a purple. It's totally what you prefer. Now what you can also do is go to effects again, choose object and choose bevel object. Now I would recommend setting the depth a little bit higher and the strength a little bit lower. Then you can click OK. Now one final touch you can do is you can go to effects once again and you can go to selection. You can choose outline selection. Now you can, you can do is adjust how fat the outline is. Or how skinny it is and also one thing i prefer but you may not it just a me thing is put location on outside selection it'll make the text a lot more cleaner and it'll help a bit now click ok and now to deselect what you have selected go up here and click this the square it looks like a square of an x on it just click it bam and you can see how much that did now you want to do the same with the bottom so rinse and repeat select Select the magic wand, hit control, select all the letters, release control, go to effects, generate, gradients. And now this doesn't have to be the same thing as the other one. Like for example, you can invert the colors and it will look a lot cooler. So you could change the colors of the other text as well. Now the rest is basically just the same bevel objects and this will stay the same. So you don't need to do this again. And then selection, outline selection. Boom. Now deselect it. And bam, now you've already got a pretty solid thumbnail. Some people would like this. Now you can also select this, this tool or click M and you can select it. And then the layer that you're on, you can move the text. So if you don't like how the text is placed, you can move it separately. And now what you want to do is go on the top layer, which is layer three. And you want to click this button or you can do control M. And what this does is it puts both of the same text on the same layer. So if you now select it, it'll both be attached to the same thing. Now what you want to do is click this button or click control shift and D, which will copy the layer. Now what you want to do is select the one below it. And if you don't have this tool selected, just select it. What you want to do is you want to drag it slightly below here. And what you can also do is go to this wrench tool that's also here. And then this will pop up and you can make it either less opaque or you can experiment with these. Like this looks cool. This looks cool. Like just select them and like maybe see what works for you is what I'm saying. What I like to do most is overlapping. It just looks cool. Also, if you want to make your text stand a bit out, you can try to put like the structures of the level in front of the text and I'll show you how. So first of all, go to the top layer where it's this text then select the eraser or click E on your keyboard. Now what you can do is put the font size up a bit. Also, there's a tip. If you hold control while doing it, it goes up by five. So for example, what you can do is like you see this structure, you could like hide this. And if the other layer like overlaps it, then you can hide that on that too. And now if you zoom out, it looks like this structure is in front of the eye. That's an effect I sometimes do with my thumbnails and it, look, and it works really well every time. Like for example, you can do it here as well with the spike, just outline it. Bam, do the same with the other layer and bam, you see how that looks. So just look at a couple structures that look good. And then if, if you like it, then cool. So for example, one here again and boom. So this looks pretty good already. Now what you can also do is make a new layer, put it to the top like this. And now you want to go to Google images and search up lens flare and then the color that your level is. So for my case, purple and go to images, of course, and boom. So just scroll down if you can't find a good one. And then once you have one that you like, for example, this one, what you can do is click the right mouse button and choose copy image. For me, it's Dutch, but it's a, it's a, it should say copy image for you. Now go back to paint.net, go on this layer, click control V both at the same time. And now, but now you're probably wondering, Luke, this is just a lens flare with a black background. You can't use this. It would ruin the thumbnail. But this is where my good friend layer properties comes to. So you go to this wrench again in the layer tab. And then all you want to do here is select this to make it this one. I don't know what, what the English translation of this one is, but just, but if you can't find it, just like scroll for a couple 
and then you'll find it eventually. So what you can do is put this on a couple of places, such as the O here. You can even make it a bit larger. And if you want another one, I have a really simple way of doing it. You go to the layer again, and you choose this one. Now drag it, and you've got yourself another one. Now do this as many times as you want until you're satisfied. Anyway, for the final step of this tutorial, go here and add a new layer. And now what you want to do is go to Google Images, and then you search up what your what the color of your level is. So in my case, purple. And then Galaxy Background. A bunch of these cool ones will come up, and if you find one that you really like, then copy paste it. So I'm just gonna look for one real quick. I like this one a lot. So what you want to do is copy and paste it. Now if it says this, just click keep the size format. Otherwise it'll mess up your thing. And then you can scale it down to fit the boundaries. Just like make it fit the boundaries. And now what you want to do is click the wrench and then you want to add it on the same one that the lens flare is on, so this. Now if it's way too bright for you, you can decrease the opacity here, and just like what you prefer. And then I think that's far to say that you could call your thumbnail done right now. So I hope this tutorial was helpful, and I hope you learned something from it, but this is basically how I make tutorials. And also, this tutorial is straight up like copied by the, of, of another guy, but like the tutorial is hard to follow. I'm trying to make a better version of it, so yeah. Anyway, see ya.